A company that does not function in harmony with its environment is doomed for failure. It may go for short-term gains, but ultimately ethics will end up catching up. Being long-term investors as we are, we believe that we, we need to take this long-term view and naturally embrace uh, ESG uh, credentials. Carmignac is an international fund management company based in Paris and we invest all, all over the world in equities, bonds and uh, with great focus on risk management. We have always been mavericks, we've always tried to do things in a different manner. Ever since I started a company we did not invest in tobacco companies, in arms companies, defense companies, nor in companies whose governance was not too transparent for us. What is ESG for us? Two words, independence and active management. Independence means that we are questioning ourselves all the time, learning from our mistakes with humility. Also, thanks to our independence, we are not here to meet quarterly targets. We are here to meet the long-term investment needs and aspirations from our clients. Also, active managers mean that we don't stop at the first Russian doll. We have the duty and ability to leave no stones unturned so that we can analyze the other Russian dolls. The production of energy, whether it's heat or whether it's electricity, accounts for about 25% or a quarter of the world's CO2 emissions. If we're going to achieve the, the targets of the Paris Agreement, we need to move away from fossil fuels and CO2 generating sources of energy and more increasing electricity as part of the mix and cleaner sources of generation. And to help us do that, wind and solar will lead the way. We estimate that by 2050, the total combined wind capacity onshore and offshore will be as as high as 10 times greater as it is today. If we look at solar, for instance, in Spain, Spain is a country that has about 300 sunny days a year on average. So it has a huge potential to be an exporter of solar generated electricity. Today, we're invested in a solar farm developer, which by 2023 will have three and a half gigawatts of capacity. And to put that into context, that's enough electricity to supply two million households. There is no way you can have an energy transition without having the metals and mining industry at the heart. If you want to have a very strong growth in renewables energy, you have to have an exponential growth in metals and mining. But if you look specifically into what is the key metal for renewable energy, it's actually copper. To produce one megawatt, of power through natural gas, you need about a ton of copper. To produce that same one megawatt of energy, you're going to need two tons of copper for onshore wind. Three for solar PV and about 11 to 12 tons of copper for offshore wind. That gives you the huge increase in copper consumptions that the world is going to need if we are taking seriously the energy transition. Sometimes you can achieve energy efficiency indirectly. One of the companies we invest in is a German software company. And on our analysis, we discovered that about 17% of their sales are in products or services that help their customers improve energy efficiency. The energy transition is going to happen anyway. But there's one specific area which very few do talk about is the very high pollution emitters, the big oil companies, the big mining companies. Those are a very sizable part, portion of CO2 emission and they need to be dealt with. Those high emitting companies are part of the problem but they're also a substantial part of the solution. 
if we want to really reduce the amount of emissions, we need to invest into renewable energy, but we also need to help the big oil and mining companies to become big energy companies in the medium term and big renewable companies in the long term. And this can only be done if we are shareholders of those companies. There are many challenges specific to emerging markets. Uh, emerging markets are structurally prone to environmental challenges for a number of reasons. Firstly, because they are very poor countries, so environmental considerations historically have been put in the background. Secondly, they are very rich in commodities, and uh, the mining is industry, as we know, is subject to uh, waste, carbon emission, pollution controversies. Our goal is to find attractive ideas to serve both objectives of creating value for our clients while not harming the environment. We invest in the gas distribution sector in China. We help finance this sector because the Chinese government wants to move away from coal-based energy to um, cleaner sources of energy, gas being one of them. China is on the right path. They have invested one and a half percent of their GDP per year over the past decade in order to fight pollution. The anti-pollution war that the Chinese government has started in 2014 has led to many opportunities. For example, for electric vehicles, we have been financing businesses that are building out batteries and also brands for e electric vehicles. The target of the government is to reach 7 million electric vehicles sold in 2025. That's a very ambitious goal, and we believe that they can reach it. As recently as uh, a couple of years ago, I'd be on marketing roadshows, presenting to groups of people, explaining our fund and our investment process, and there'd always be one or two comedians in the room who'd make fun of incorporating sustainability. But now, today, when I do the same marketing roadshows, those same clients, they're not laughing anymore, they're taking notes, because increasingly their clients want to know how their money's being deployed. At Carmignac, when it comes to ESG, we start at the end. And what is the end? The end is the long-term investment needs and aspiration of our clients. We have created a culture in the firm that helps move forward this dual objective of making sure that our clients obtain decent returns but at the same time that their, their capital is, uh, is put to good use. As active manager, we decide to invest and engage these companies. But we also have the freedom not to invest and not to engage with some companies. When we see no positive outcome or no hope. Fund management companies, provided they are active, can have a significant impact on the way companies are run and the shape of things to come.